Hello everyone, and welcome to yet another Chalice Chat. As you can see, we are here in the Hunter's Dream, and I think the first thing I'm going to do is repair my Tonitrus, which, uh, if you don't do, it uh, is quite likely to uh, break down on you. It uh, does not have the highest durability of all the weapons that are out there in Bloodborne, uh, which I think might be what the game is getting at when it tells you that... Uh, it's not the most popular, for whatever reason, of the contemporary hunters. And now, let's take a look at what we can do to level up. Looks like I can get one level out of that, that's fine. And then I'm going to buy some blood vials uh, over here at this shop with the rest of my blood echoes. Okay, that leaves us the 114 blood echoes in reserve. And now, we're going to return to the actual chalice itself, right where we left off. So, here we are, back in central Tumaru. And if we backtrack a little bit here, you can see this off to the right is the section we cleared last time. That's what got us the Hintertomb chalice. And now we are going to press forward onto the actual second layer of the central Tumaru chalice dungeon. Let's see what awaits us here. Looks like this guy was hiding out. And uh, once again, these guys are getting stronger. Just by going down a layer in this dungeon, they've already gotten stronger from the first layer, where one hit meant it looked like they would die, but they wouldn't actually die. So, whoop. There is some variance within each layer of the dungeon, as well as from one dungeon to the next. It's not just a static thing. So here we have our boss door that is not yet open. And what else have we got? Um, we've got this direction we can go here, and can we go straight up? We can also go straight up. So let's start by going straight across from the lamp and see where that leads us. Uh, oh, it's one of these double rooms. With two levels and a ladder. So let's see what awaits us on this higher level. And, oh, I remember this guy. This guy looks... Oh, and there's two of them! Oh no! Oh no! Oh no! Dodge the fire! Dodge the fire! And there's a kidnapper! And there's a kidnapper! Okay, and dodge away! Dodge away! Dodge away! These guys hurt! Don't dodge into the unknown room! Finn, come on! No! Oh, did that... Yep, that got me. Oh well. Oh well. There was more up there than I bargained for. Much more. But, I don't think I had time to heal, so not really that big of a loss, I suppose. Wow. Yeah, those guys that throw fire, I remember the first time I ever encountered them in the Chalice Dungeons. They look so much like the friendly uh, dweller in the uh, Urden Chapel that I didn't bother attacking them, didn't pay them much mind, was going to try talking with them later, and they shot fire at me, and I died. So, they left a very strong impression on me from the first time I played through these Dallas dungeons. Bad luck about that kidnapper. Yeah, that's the other thing about these Chalice dungeons, is that the uh, density of the enemies they throw at you can sometimes be a little bit much. Keep moving, keep moving, dodge the fire. Well, okay, so much for dodging the fire. I can't believe that hurt as much as it did. But, eh, yep, dying in rapid succession here. Dying in rapid succession. Not sure exactly what I need to do in order to get better. I'm pretty sure my strategy is fairly sound. I got to keep moving and deal enough damage to take out the fire throwers. Um, is my plan here. But, hmm, might need to rethink that if it keeps getting me killed as would make sense, I would hope. Perhaps I will charge, uh, or I will try charging up my Conatrus as I climb up those stairs and see if that will give me some extra damage, and if I do get some extra damage, whether that will make a difference. Might be too long of a wait, though, coming up this ladder. I don't know. Nope, I still have the buff. And, oh, there I go. Well, I guess that's why you, uh, I guess that's why you spend all of your blood echoes before you come into a chalice dungeon like this, because 
I just lost whatever, however much that guy had on him. But honestly, not that big of a deal. We didn't have that many just from killing those three or four enemies. Not that much of a problem. So I need to think of a, either think of a better way to deal with them or find a better way. Ooh, hello, poison knife. Find a better way to execute and keep attacking you to try and get more health back. Dodge. Okay. Takes care of you. All right. So let's see. This time, I'm going to try running straight for the one that's far away, as opposed to fighting the one that's right in my face. So long, buddy. Hey there, pal. How are you doing? Goodbye. All right, it's two hits either way. Oop, hello, fire. Hello, more fire. Okay. I should have dodged to the side rather than back, but I still think that was fairly promising, despite the fact that I once again got obliterated. Because I think if I wait too long to get that second guy, that kidnapper is going to be more of an issue. Whereas if I have to run back towards the ladder, it makes it easier to just fall down. And as much as I want to try and avoid falling down, the fall damage is probably less than getting shot in the face with a fireball like that. Alright, here we go. Attempt number four, I think? This, uh... Wow, this is really putting my lack of Bloodborne skills on display. Whoa! Hello, and can I get a little bit of health back? Yes. I got a little bit of health back, I'll take that. And I actually picked up a poison knife. And there's something I wanted to touch on, kind of in regards to my own relatively weak play here, but first, let's see if I can't deal with this guy and actually purposefully dive off the ledge here. That'll give me some time to heal. Now let's come back up this ladder and see if maybe I can deal with our other friend here, keeping in motion. Strike number two, that's going to do it for him. And now I'm ready for you, Mr. Kidnapper. Swing at me. Miss. All right. And now charge up. And while you charge up, I will bring you to doom. Finally, triumph at last. All right. So now that we're up here on the second level, we can see that there's one door over here. And there's one door in the center over here, and that appears to be that. So, I will press forward. I want to go on this little side path first, I think. But, yeah, as I was uh, starting to say, uh, so this is one of these rooms with a higher and a lower section. And guys with flaming weapons ready to ambush me. Ooh, they take three hits now. That is good to know. That is very important news. The number of hits it takes to finish these guys off matters tremendously. Sometimes there's a guy over in this corner, uh, occasionally obs obscured by smoke, but that doesn't look to be the case here. So, very well then. But yes, uh, one of the things that I want to try and do, both with Translation Born and with this series, is uh, be willing to explode. Uh, blah, blah, explode be willing to expose um, some of my flaws and um, issues that I have to deal with. Kind of like, whoop, I thought he had a gun and instead he had a melee weapon. But it worked out. There we go. It worked out just fine. Because uh, one of the things, for instance, that I hear a lot, ooh, we found the boss switch already. Um, one of the things that I hear a lot in regards to the Translation Born series, some of my friends will come up to me and say, Hey, how did you know all this stuff? And the answer in many cases is, I didn't necessarily know all that stuff until I started making the series. A lot of the work that goes into it is research and learning more. And it's something that I enjoy a great deal is continuing to learn. Actually, uh, one of the best things about working as a translator is it's an excuse to learn about all sorts of different things. Uh, things that you would never even expect to have to look up. I was looking up some kind of special swimsuit. Wait, I don't want to go down here just yet. There was another door up here. Yeah, I was looking up some kind of swimsuit called a rash guard the other day um, because I'd never heard of it before and I wanted to have enough background knowledge in order to get a translation right. So it just goes to show you there's uh, all manner of things you can uh, be trying to research and learn as a translator, and it's 
Kind of an excuse. I heard it summed up once as becoming a semi-expert on a whole bunch of different subjects um, over the course of working as a translator. But the point is, you're never that good when you start. And you're never that good in the middle of it. You have to put in time, you have to practice, you have to work at it to slowly improve uh, and try and learn more and more. And you have to be willing to be in that space where you don't know it first and you get better and you learn more. And I feel like, uh, like with um, suboptimal play here in Bloodborne itself, you just kind of want to constantly be striving and trying to find ways to improve yourself. So I want to show the fact that I'm not necessarily the best player in the world, but if I keep at it, um, I can accomplish things too. And I'm not seeing much else in this room. I'm not gonna check too much for illusory walls here. I got a tip that illusory walls are basically where you would expect them to be. If uh, there was going to be a doorway in a room anyway, that's where you can expect to find illusory walls, which is good to know because that had been my basic philosophy to begin with. But uh, nice to have that confirmed. And let's climb down this ladder. I believe that's both doors on the top layer of this room. And I'm pretty sure on the lower level of this room, um, there were no other doors except for the main entrance. Okay, and I suspect that it, uh, if we turn over this way, we are going to find that it's the drop room where those enemies could have ambushed us. And let me put away this torch so that I can shoot at this guy. And this is the one with the gun. So, let's try and stay close and do enough damage that he was, well, he's never going to pull out a melee weapon. That works too, I suppose. I mean, it meant I didn't get a chance to get a nice visceral attack in, but it also meant that uh, he never got a chance to do any damage to me, which is fine by me. Just okay in my book, them not being able to hurt me. Sounds good. And because we had that initial detour, I don't think, yeah, it seemed pretty unlikely that we would actually have another one right before the boss. So let's rush into the boss chamber here. Let's get the gun out. Let's see who this is. Who and what this is. Aha! Um, another Old Lords related thing. Oh, this is the watch person of the Old Lords, as opposed to the watch dog of the Old Lords. Ha! Ah. Ooh, that was, uh, that was something. Um, but yeah, literally, uh, former and then lord. Um, so that's where old lord is coming from. Yikes! Um, for the first two kanji. Third one, of course, is no. Um, and then we have number, which again is being used for guard. And then person. So, the guard person of the old lords or the watch person of the old lords, as opposed to the watch dog of the old lords. If we're using that, wow, he hurts. Hits hard, hurts me. Um, and let's pull out the gun again, and heal all the way up, and maybe? Nope, I can't, looks like I can't interrupt that magic. But I can. Ooh, ow! Whoa, look at that. Three swings of that sword, and down I went. Okay. Wow, this is the die-a-lot episode of the Chalice Chats. <laughs> uh, although, of course, I'm just going to be dying more and more the further we go into this dungeon, and then the further we try and press on in the main dungeon series. But that's okay. That's kind of what we're here for. And I'm just going to run past these guys this time. And look at this, the fog is just right here. And fortunately I died right by the entrance, so I can pick these up with no issue. And let's see... Oops. Let's see how viable uh, parrying those... Oops. Sword swings are. He's not... He or she, I suppose. This could be a female enemy that I'm fighting. Swing your sword. Thank you. Ooh, so I can... I can get, uh, 
uh, visceral attack off of those. Now that you've backed yourself into the wall, are you going to keep trying to back away by swinging your sword? That's good to know. Ooh. Okay, I like this strategy. I could be executing on it a little bit better. But, huh, didn't give me a visceral. That's okay. I'll waste all my bullets. And, again, no visceral. But that's okay, because that person has been defeated. So long, watch person of the old lords. I guess I never managed to fully finish what I was saying there, but uh, I will look up the official name of that boss, and you can compare the quality of the boss name translation for yourself. So I'm going to light this lamp, we are going to go down to the next layer, and I think that's actually going to do it for this particular Chalice Chat. Um, you may have noticed that, um, per my idea of experimenting with episode lengths, the previous episode of the Chalice Chats was relatively long, it was closer to the half hour mark, and this new episode of the Chalice Chats is going to be relatively short. I think it's the first one uh, I've done that's been under 20 minutes long. This one's going to be closer to 15, I think, after I've finished putting the final touches. And once again, it looks like we have a pre-first um, lamp um, extra section to explore. So I suppose that is where we will start things off when we come back. Although I may go to the Hunter's Dream in the interim. We'll see. Anyway, uh, I hope to catch you next time on the Chalice Chats. Thanks for watching, everyone.